Hello everybody, Thomas here, aka Restaurants Trainer, and welcome back to another one of my videos. So last year, I uploaded the first video to this channel, where I asked the question, how much can you complete the Pokemon Home Pokedex with one of the Switch games? And much to my surprise, that video did extremely well. At the time of writing the script, it has nearly 50,000 views and over 1,500 likes which blows every other video I've ever made out of the water. So thank you for that. However, that video came out before the DLC for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet was released. In fact, the script for that video was written before they were even revealed. But now that the DLC is fully out, now's a good time to make a follow-up, where I'll cover any Pokemon, moves and abilities that I previously showed to be unobtainable but also correct any mistakes that you guys pointed out in the last video. Cause I wasn't perfect, and I even admitted that myself in that video. So while I was busy recording my playthroughs of the DLCs for my main Let's Play channel, I had to restroom go through the comments and make a list of all the mistakes I made, cause there was more than I was expecting. This is just a picture of Spinder! What do you mean page 2? Oh, there it is. So yeah, if Reshram's not so subtle hint didn't clue you in already, there was a problem with Spender. Although it wasn't the first mistake to be pointed out, it was definitely the one most people noticed. Though I'm going to give the credit to Usam ZF6GC, as they were the first to bring it to my attention. So in the last video, I mentioned how Spender can be caught in BDSP via swarms. And while that is accurate, I wasn't aware of a bug that prevented Spinder that were caught in BDSP from being transferred to home. Now, Bulbapedia says that this is due to inconsistencies with the spot patterns. But I'm going to give a quick shout out to True Looneyman, who gave a more detailed explanation of the issue. So, unfortunately, while a Spinder can be caught, it can't be transferred to home, taking one Pokemon off our total. The next mistake I want to cover was actually the first one pointed out. Copy ID pointed out that since it's possible to get an Alolan Grimer from an in-game trade in the Let's Go games, you could then transfer it via home to Scarlet and Violet, and then use an ability patch to get Power of Alchemy. And they're absolutely correct. See, I'm not quite as familiar with the Let's Go games as I am with Sword and Shield or Scarlet and Violet. So at the time I wrote the script for that video, I thought the only way you could get Alolan forms on the Switch was in the Isle of Armour via the Alolan Diglett Hunting, which doesn't include Alolan Kawama or Alolan Geodude, completely forgetting about the in-game trades in the Let's Go games. With this new info, I theorise that it should also be possible with the Alolan Geodude line and the Galvanise ability should the Geodude line be added to the DLC, and sure enough, they were added in Dual Mask. However, then the Indigo Disc came along and made things so much simpler by adding the Alolan Grimer and Judo lines themselves into the game to be caught normally, with no need for transferring through home, adding two more abilities to our list. Next, I want to cover a mistake I made involving the special tutor mood in the Let's Go games. The Red Smiley pointed out that the partner Pikachu and Eevee can't be transferred into home for pretty obvious reasons, and since they're the only Pokemon that can even learn those moves, but they can't be obtained in Hobie's move decks, right? Well here's the kicker, those moves aren't even in the home move decks. Yep, Pokemon Company had the foresight to not include those moves, since it's quite literally impossible to transfer Pokemon with any of those moves into home in first place. Legally at least. So I didn't even need to cover them. Similar to this, Reggie Ultima pointed out the Calyx's fusion moves, Astral Barrage and the Glacial Lance, aren't counted in home either, since you can't transfer a fused Calyrex. But the main thing they pointed out was that it wasn't possible to register Kyurem fusion moves, Freeze Shock and Ice Burn, since you can't transfer a fused Kyurem into home either. Now you'd think that I, someone who has a Reshiram, aka one of the dragons acquired for one of the fusions, would have known this. But no, it went completely over my head since I prefer my waifu dragon unfused. Reggie Ultima also correctly pointed out that the only way to register either move was to have a Smeagol learn it via sketch, and then transfer the Smeagol into home instead. 
But since all three dragons were only available in the Grand Tundra via Dynamax Adventures, and Smeagol is only available in 3DSP, and neither could be transferred to the other game, it was impossible to do at the time. Keywords at the time. Because thanks to the Indigo Disc, both Smeagol and the Tail Trio are available in the same game. I mean, if you set up a double battle correctly, you could have Smeagol learn the fusion moves, meaning that it's now possible. So no need to lower the counter. And on top of that, Glacial Lance and National Barrage have since been added to home and are now obtainable due to the inclusion of Smeagol. Now if you've seen the last video, you might remember that when I made my list of abilities, there was one ability missing, and I couldn't figure out which one it was. While several people tried to guess what it was, Potato's Basket was the one to figure out what I was missing. It was Synchronize. Another mistake they pointed out was that one of the abilities I listed was Natural Power, and assumed I meant Natural Gift. Now since Natural Gift is a move, I correctly guessed that they meant Natural Cure, which is what I actually meant. But in my head, I mixed up with Nature Power, and thus Natural Power got written down instead, saying that none of you would correctly guessed. Now the next one is... interesting to say the least. As a mistake that you thought was being pointed out wasn't actually a mistake, it did lead to me finding an actual mistake. Jason Swan thought I missed Mewtwo Stick to move Slash Strike. So naturally, I'd go and check to see if they were right. I ended up finding that while Slash Strike was included, it was miscategorized. You might remember in the last video that when it came to Stick to moves, I divided them into Legendary and Non-Legendary. Now since Mewtwo is a Legendary, Slash Strike should have gone onto the Legendary list. But instead, somehow, I accidentally put it on the non-legendary list. I have no clue how I made that mistake, but I did. So the last thing here isn't really a mistake, but I feel I should address anyway. You might remember that when it came to the list of abilities, I combined both versions of As One, signature abilities of the Calyrex fusions. Now I got a couple complaints about that. Since the two abilities, while they do have the same name, are technically different abilities, and Pokemon at Home itself counts both of them separately. And truth be told, I don't actually remember why I combined them initially. The best theory I could come up with is that I did it to avoid confusing myself when I originally make the list of abilities. Since they have the same name, I might have thought I added the same ability twice, which might have caused me to miscount or something like that. Whatever the reason, I'm undoing it. And with that, I think we've gone through all the known mistakes of the last video. Now to move on to all the Pokemon, moves and abilities that used to be unobtainable, but are now available thanks to the DLC. Now before we cover what's changed, I feel like we should briefly cover what the rules are, what is and isn't obtainable, for those of you who either haven't seen the original video, or just need a refresher. Rule 1. The Pokemon, move, or ability has to be obtainable within at least one of the Switch games. Meaning that they can either be caught naturally in the games, or in the case of moves and abilities, can be on a Pokemon that is considered obtainable. Rule 2 No transferring Pokemon from older generations via Pokemon Bank. Rule 3 no transferring Pokemon from Pokemon Go. That's a can of all forms that I don't feel like opening right now. Rule 4 No limited time events. This was definitely the rule that most people just ignored when trying to correct me last video. So I'll say it again. The Pokemon can only be obtained in the Switch games via an event that is only up for a limited time. It doesn't count and that includes the Mightiest Mark Terrorade events, which people kept bringing up. Now if an event doesn't have a time limit, then it could be considered, provided it doesn't break a different rule, like the Melbourne win home that requires Pokemon Go that some people brought up. Hopefully everyone understands the rules a bit better now, especially that last one. 
let's get back on track. Let's start off with the Pokemon. Last video, I concluded that there were 49 Pokemon that were unobtainable within the Switch only rules. Those Pokemon were Celebi, the Oxus, Victini, the Snivy line, the Tepig line, the Patrat line, the Elemental Monkeys, the Blitzel line, the Sawaddle line, Ducklet line, Meloetta, Genesect, the Chespin line, the Fennekin line, the Freaky line, Furfrey, Diancy, Hooper, Volcanion, the Pikapek line, Minior, Marshadow, Magiana, Zeraora, the Meltan line, and Zerouge. So as mentioned earlier, Spinder technically goes here as well due to a bug, which rounded up to 50. Although I should also mention that Walking Wake and Iron Leaves remain as event exclusive, bumping the turn up to 52. However, quite a few of these Pokemon were added in the Scarlet and Violet DLC. The Teal Mask added the Sawaddle line and the Ducklet line while the Indigo Disc added the Blitzel line, the Pikapek line, Minior, and every single starter Pokemon from Gens 1 to 8, meaning that the Snivy line, the Tepig line, the Chespin line, the Fennekin line, and the Freaky line are all finally available. Another surprise addition was Meloetta, who can be encountered in a rather unusual method. Think along the lines of how you encountered Keldeo in the Grand Tundra. Yeah, it's that kind of weird. This means that there are only 25 Pokemon that remain unobtainable, all of which are either mythicals or legendaries, with the exception of the Elemental Monkeys and Furfury, and also Spinder due to the bug. It is worth pointing out that the DLC did add some new Pokemon as well. The Teal Mask added Diplin, Poltergeist, Sinister, Okie Dogie, Monkey Dory, Pheasantipity, and also the most adorable little martial level Pokemon in the form of Oikopon. Meanwhile, the Indigo Disc gave us Arcalodon, Hydrapple, Gouging Fire, Raging Bolt, Iron Crown, Iron Boulder, and Terrapagos. Lastly, the recently added epilogue, Mochi Mayhem, gave us Petrarunt. Now this is an interesting case, since Petron is an event based mythical, and such events are usually limited time. However, at least according to Cerebi, the mythical Petroberry event doesn't actually have an end date, simply saying until the server is shut down. So I'm going to count it. This brings our new total of obtainable Pokemon to 1000 out of 1025. Now let's move on to the moves. Last video, I concluded that there were 66 moves that were unobtainable, which I'll show on screen, so I don't have to read them out. Now let's see which of these moves has been added back in, and oh, there's only two. Beak Blast on Cannon and Relic Song on Meloetta are the only moves on that list that have now become available. That's disappointing. However, the DLC also introduced some brand new moves. Let's cover them. The Teal Mask only introduced four new moves, all of which are signature moves. Blood Moon for Blood Moon Ursaluna, Matcha Gotcha for Sinister, Syrup Bomb for Diplomat Hydrapple, and Ivy Cudgel for Ogreborn. Meanwhile, the Indigo Disc added 14 new moves, seven of which being Hard Press, Dragon Cheer, Alluring Voice, Temper Flare, Super Cell Slam, Psychic Noise, and Upper Hand are all TMs, while the other seven are signature moves. Electroshock for Arcaladon, Peristarstorm for Terrapagos, Pickle Beam for Hydrapple, Burning Bulwark for Gouging Fire, Thunderclap for Raging Bolt, Mighty Cleave for Iron Boulder, and Pachyon Cutter for Iron Crown. And then the epilogue came along 
and gave us Petrant and its signature move, Malignant Chain. But there's two more moves to discuss. Hydro Steam and Psyblade. The signature moves of Walking Wake and Iron Leaves respectively. And unfortunately, since both Pokemon are unobtainable within our rules, as both are currently still event exclusive, their signature moves are thus also unobtainable. Which funnily enough, means there's still 66 moves that are unobtainable. If we add the 19 new moves, and subtract the 11 let's go to the moves, since home doesn't count them, then that leaves us with 750 out of 816 moves. And lastly, we come to the abilities. Now in the last video, I concluded that there were only 6 abilities that were unobtainable. Battle Bond, Galvanize, Power of Alchemy, Shields Down, Soul Heart, and Victory Star. Now as mentioned earlier, it turned out that it was possible to get Power of Alchemy. And with the release of the Teal Mask, Galvanize was also possible. However, the Indigo Disc not only made both significantly easier, but also added in Minial, which made Shields Down obtainable as well. Now the DLC added 9 new abilities. Hospitality from the Poltergeist line, Mind's Eye from Blood Moon Ursa Luna, Super Sweet Syrup from Diplon and Hydrapple, and Body Aspect from Ogapon, Toxic Chain from the Lousy 3, Terra Shift, Terra Shell, and Terraform Zero, all from Terrapagos, and Poison Puppeteer from Petrant. Now I do want to quickly take a step back to Embody Aspect, which is Ogapon's ability while she's terrestrialized. The, well this is a new ability, it's currently the only ability that Pokemon Hope doesn't count, so we don't have to either. So if we add in Synchronize, which I missed last time, and count both versions of Alphabon separately, like I should have in the first place, then our total comes to 303 out of 306. Meaning there's only three abilities left. Battle Bond from Ash Greninja, Soul Heart from Magiana, and Victory Star from Victini. So if you have all three of those Pokemon, then you have the potential to actually complete the Pokemon Home Ability decks. Now before we end the video, there's one last thing I want to cover. Forms. See, I got a few comments last video, from people who wanted me to also cover forms, as the form living decks is quite popular. Now I was initially hesitant to do this, as I had a feeling that researching this would be a headache, though I was told that it shouldn't be too hard. And well, I was kind of right. See, Pokemon forms are actually quite varied and unique. Some are tied to abilities, some are tied to items, and some are tied to whatever gimmick that game had. But here's the problem. Some forms are registered automatically with the base form, but some forms have to be deposited separately, and some forms can't even be deposited at all. Basically, I was looking for a list of Pokemon forms that are officially recognised by home, and unfortunately, I couldn't find such a list. So if you know such a list, please let me know in the comments. So here's what I'll do instead. Cerebi has a list of all Pokemon, forms included, that can be deposited in Pokemon Home. I'll only count forms off of that list. I also won't count gender differences, since they seem pretty self-explanatory. And since they weren't included, I'll briefly cover some of the gimmick forms. Fusion Pokemon, like Curum, Necrozma, and Calyrex, are registered when both of the required Pokemon are deposited simultaneously. Mega Evolved Pokemon are registered automatically with the base form, while Gigantamax forms are only registered if the deposited Pokemon is capable of doing so. Something else I want to quickly discuss are Pokemon that have multiple forms, but none of the forms are the main one. Think of Pokemon like Alcremi, Dealing, Unknown, even Pokemon like Toxicity and Urshifu. All of these Pokemon have multiple forms. 
we don't really have an original form. Take Rotom for example. Rotom has multiple forms. Yeah, we can all agree that this is the original. But what about a Pokemon like the Bay Bay? Which one would you consider the original? See my point now? So basically, for any Pokemon like that, I had to pick one form to be the original. I basically mean that I chose whatever Cerebri considers the original for the most part. Which I'll list on screen for everyone. Now back to the list. After adding everything up, I got a list of 241 different forms. It seems like a lot, and well, it is. But I should point out that 120 of those forms are made up of just four Pokemon. Unknown, Vivian, the Baby line, and most notably, our Creamy, who has 62 forms alone. Now right away, El Creamy and all of her forms can be obtained in either Sword and Shield or the Indigo Disc. Meanwhile, all colours for the Fabebe line can be found in Scarlet and Violet, and all versions of Unknown can be caught in the Nazarchius. However, Vivian is a very different case. Now I'm sure that most of you are aware that Pokeball Pattern Vivian is event exclusive. What I'm sure a lot of you aren't aware of is the fact that every Vivian pattern isn't available, with the exception of the Fancy pattern. And this is largely due to how Vivian's patterns are determined. In the older games, it was based on your real world location. But in Scarlet and Violet, which are the only Switch games where you can catch Vivian, all Vivian are guaranteed to be a Fancy pattern. Now there is a way to get the other patterns in game, but it requires Pokemon Go, which goes against the rules which means our current total is 101 out of 241. Now let's move on to regional variants. Obviously, all the Galarian forms can be found in Sword and Shield and its DLCs. All Paldean forms can be found in Scarlet and Violet. And all Hysterian forms can be found in Legends Arceus as well as a few of them being available in the Scarlet and Violet DLC, which adds 40 to our total. However, a lot of the forms are a bit different. Most of them can be caught in the Indigo Disc DLC. However, a little in Raichi, a little in Marowak, and a little in Yath and Persian can't be obtained in that DLC, but can be obtained as rewards hunting a little in Diglett in the Isle of Armor DLC which only leaves Alola and Valata and Radicave, which are fortunately available in the Let's Go games via an in-game trade in Cerulean City, which raises the total to 159 out of 241, already over halfway there. Now for the sake of time, I'm going to breeze through a bunch of forms that are pretty obviously available and shouldn't require an explanation as to why. Burmy and Wormerdam in both the Sandy and Trash Cloak, East Sea Shellos and Gushadon, Blue Stripe Basculin, Feeling and Swordsbuck in Summer, Autumn and Winter, Pumpkaboo and Gorgas in Small, Large and Super Sizes, Oricorio in Pom Pom, Owl and Sensu Style, Midnight Lichen Rock, Orange, Yellow, Green, Blue, Indigo and Violet Core Mini Ore, Low-key Toxicity, Authentic Sinistee and Poltergeist, Rapid Strike Urshifu, Family of Three Mousehold, Blue, Yellow and White Plumage Scorkabilly, Droopy and Stretchy Tazugiri, Three Segment of Dunsparce, Artisan Poltergeist, and Masterpiece Sinister. This has 42 to our total. Bring it to 201 out of 241. Now for the ones that may take some explanation. The Rotom forms can be obtained in every Switch game that Rotom was in, as long as you know where to get the appliances in each game. Skyform Shaman can be obtained by using the Grace of Dia flower on Shaman. BDSP, Legends Arceus, and Scarlet and Violet 
all have methods of getting the flower. The Legends Arceus is the only one where Shaman itself is naturally obtainable. The Therian forms of the forces of nature can be obtained by using the Reveal Glass on them. The Reveal Glass can be obtained in Sword and Shield, Legends Arceus and Scarlet and Violet. Three different methods. Though obviously, Legends Arceus is the simplest choice. Especially since that's the only game where you can even catch an Amorous. Resolute Form Keldeo is obtained by simply having Keldeo know its signature move, Secret Sword. No seriously, that's it. It's kind of like how a quads can only Mega Evolve if it knows Dragon Ascent. Zygarde is interesting, as the 10% form can be boxed normally. But to register 100% Zygarde, you need to deposit a Zygarde with Power Construct. Which makes sense, as Complete Zygarde is a battle exclusive form. Duskway and Lycan Rock is interesting. It was originally an event exclusive form, as it required a Rock Ruff with the ability Orient Tempo in order to evolve, which is an ability it normally doesn't have. But Scarlet and Violet made it possible to catch Orient Tempo Rock Ruff in the wild, and evolving a Rock Ruff with Orient Tempo in the evening would give you Duskway and Lycan Rock. Blood Moon Ursa Luna is exclusive to the Tomb Master DLC, at the end of the questline with Perrin. Pretty simple, honestly. Which brings that total to 216 at 241, leaving 25 forms unobtainable. Let's cover them. The special cat Pikachus are event exclusive. Roaming form Gimmigul is only available to Pokemon Go. Attack, Defense and Speed form Deoxys are unavailable, as Deoxys itself isn't obtainable. And the same goes for Hooper Unbound and Dada Zarud. Battlebond Greninja is only available to the Sun and Moon demo, which would require Pokemon Bank. Original Color Magiana is only obtainable through completing the Pokemon Home National Dex, which we've already proven to not be possible. And lastly, all nine of the fur fruit trims. Now this one was interesting, since I got conflicting information on whether these forms were even counted in home. I decided to add them anyway, since they were on Cerebus list, but regardless, they're unobtainable since fur fruit itself is still stuck on the 3DS. And with that, I believe the forms are done. So just to recap, the amount of obtainable Pokemon has gone from 959 out of 1008 to 1000 out of 1025. Moves have gone from 742 out of 808 to 750 out of 816. And abilities have gone from 290 out of 296 to 303 out of 306. And as I said earlier, forms are about 216 out of 241. But it's entirely possible that I got something wrong there. After all, a decent portion of this video was dedicated to correcting mistakes I made in the previous video. So if you spotted anything, be sure to let me know in the comments. That's gonna do it for this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe, it would really help this channel out, and I'll see you in the next video. See ya!